Hi there, it's Adam from Impact Gamers, and for Retro Remake, we're going to be looking at Namco's 1980 absolute classic, Pac-Man. So we've used Click Team Fusion 2.5 to make Vac-Man, which is obviously completely different because it's a robotic vacuum cleaner. Where do we get our inspiration from? Well, uh, in the UK, the news this week, their robot vacuum cleaner escapes from a Cambridge travel lodge, yeah, which is a sort of like a motel. And uh, it, it went out the door of the hotel in Cambridge and staff said it could be anywhere. And it was found under a hedge on Friday. Well, there we go. It's a, it's a happy end to a tragic tale of technology gone wrong. But we're going to be making Vacman and um, it's just like Pac-Man in, in the way that the, the character will move around the screen, collecting items and avoiding rats instead of ghosts in our game. So let's give it a play. So the rats are loose. I'm going to hit a battery, which means that they are now able to be sucked up, but I'm not going to get there in time. Let's see. Don't have long. There we go. And it goes back into the center cage. And if I get caught at any point, I get destroyed. Okay, let's see how to make it. So I've loaded up Clicked in Fusion 2.5 Free Edition, and I'm going to click on File and New for a new application. I'm going to edit the application window size. So I'm just going to select application one here and click on window and change its size. It's going to be square because uh, Pac-Man has a square maze. And so we're going to pop it in 672 by 672. Now I'll explain why we use that size. It's because we're going to be working to a grid of 32 pixels by 32 pixels and that fits quite nicely so we're gonna save it just to make sure that everything's okay so file save as and let's call this backman to edit the frame our level we're going to click on this gray number one here and it'll take us straight into what is the frame editor now i've already got my grid turned on i'm just going to turn that off for the moment we'll turn it back on later so you will, should have a white square, which is your level. And we're going to insert from the top menu a new object, and it's going to be active. This is going to be our player. Press OK and click with the left click to place it down. We're going to rename it. So let's click on the About Properties and change it to P1 for Player 1. We're going to add some temporary artwork in just um, and later on we'll add the proper artwork in, but just so that we can get on with making the game. Now we can do that several different ways. We can double click on the object, right click and choose edit, or we can press enter when it's selected. Any of those will bring up this window where we can edit the, the frame of the animation. So not the level frame, but the animation frame. And what I'm going to do is zoom in by just pulling on the, um, the slider next to the zoom. And I'm gonna use the white sheet here to clear it. I'm gonna use the ellipse tool, which is a circle. I'm gonna get it filled. And I'm just gonna choose a yellowy color. I don't want to fill exactly the whole of the square. I want to leave a little bit of a border. So I'm gonna start sort of three pixels in and pull it across to about three pixels in the other side. There we go. Now it's only rough, so it doesn't matter if it's not precise, but the, you, you'll notice if you click on the hotspot, it's at 15, 15. Now that's going to come up later because that we're going to use that as a reference later on to remember that the center of the object is actually 15 pixels in by 15 pixels. Um, you don't need to change that, leave that at 15, 15, because that's halfway of our 32. Okay. Now we're going to change its movement. So in its properties window, click on the running man for movement and change from type, click on the word static. And we're going to change that to eight directions. Just there under non-physical movements, eight directions. Now 
it allows us to move 32 different directions, but we're going to click here on this little star and these uh, number references, and we're just going to turn off the diagonals. We only want to be able to move up, down, left, and right. Um, and for initial direction, rather than it being completely random, we'll reset that and we'll have our VAC man facing to the right. So we're just going to clear all of the arrows and then just click on the square zero which is the right direction you can just click off and um, all of those settings are saved if i select it again you'll see that's saved so we can um, change its speed and deceleration and acceleration i think that a quite slow speed for pac-man we'll try 20 you can change it if you don't like it later but deceleration we're going to set to zero because pac-man doesn't stop moving unless uh, he hits into something we're going to test our application by just clicking on run and we can run the application by just clicking here and as soon as we start moving so if i press right off it goes to the right left up down it's great and you'll notice when he goes off screen he keeps on going now what actually happens there he's back again what happens in Pac-Man is he wraps around the play area. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new event in for that. But before I do, I'm just going to change the speed up to a, a different number. I think about 28 would be quite good. And you can test your game again. Just run the frame or the application either. Yep, I'm happy with that and close it. We're now going to go into the event editor, which is where we add the code. And we're going to insert a group of events just to keep things tidy. And we'll call this player. And this will be where we put the code for the player. We're going to click new condition under that new group. And we're going to click on P1, our VACMAN character. And we're going to say position, test position. And this allows us to say if our character leaves on the left or on the top, or on the right or on the bottom any of those will get the character to wrap around the screen so what we do is we right click underneath the object we want to affect which is p1 and we'll choose movement wrap around play area now if we run our application or our frame if we hit go to the wall we should teleport all the way to the other side fantastic and you can test that it works for up down left right Great. Perfect. Well, let's save our work, file and save. Now we're going to add in some walls to our level. So we're going to go back into the frame editor and we're going to turn on the grid. We're going to use grid setup where we can set everything up in one go. So click on the icon here and we'll leave the start, the origin at zero, zero and the size be 32 by 32 and we want to snap to the grid and show the grid and we'll get all these dots appear now if we move our vacman character because it's 32 by 32 it fits exactly into the grid and i'm just going to move the vacman character there before we add the background in so let's add in some walls we're going to insert a new object this time we're going to add a backdrop object press ok and click to put down now we're going to rename it so click on the about property and we'll just call it wall we'll then edit it so you can right click and choose edit or double click or press enter when selected and we're just going to clear it and fill it using the fill tool the bucket um, i'm just going to fill it a blue and press ok we also need to change it to be an obstacle so in its runtime options we're going to change its obstacle type to obstacle now if we touch it nothing will happen because we haven't got an event so let's go into the event editor and let's add in a new condition that if p1 collision with backdrop so anything that's an obstacle in the backdrop then we can right click under the player and say movement stop so now if we run our frame see that works fine let's go back into our frame editor 
and we can add the wall by either dragging it in from the side we can hold control on the keyboard and drag and it will make a duplicate of whatever we pull or we can use paint mode it's like a pen and click on the wall and you can click and drag out what you want if you make a mistake you can right click to stop paint mode drag a selection box around what you want to get rid of and just press delete on the keyboard and you can get rid of it quickly that way i'm just going to fast forward to my maze so i've uh, added my walls in and as you can see in the center i've made this sort of u shape which will be the cage for the rats to start in it's uh, four blocks by five blocks it needs to be at least four by five or at least four by four for them to fit in um, and you can test your game you can run your application and you can try and travel around your maze make sure you can get all the way around and fit through the spots fine great close that and save your work We're now going to add the enemies in, the rats. So we're going to insert a new object, an active because they will move, and OK, and click to drop down. Just going to move it into this cage area. Let's rename it. So in the about properties, let's call it rat1. And let's add some temporary artwork in. So I'm just going to double click and clear and just just make a shape this can be the red rat or you can choose whatever colors you want but i'm just going to uh, just do a quick shape and once again not going right to the edges because then i'll allow a bit more movement um maybe i'll just add a quick nose into some whiskers <laughs> there we go right there's our rat um, we will put it in a group so that all the rats behave similarly similarly uh, in the events uh, properties we will change the qualifier click in the blank space edit add it into a group and we'll call it enemies makes sense and this grouping is just so that we can have one rule to apply to all rats we're also going to set something called values some alterable values some things values that can change and so we'll have a new value that we'll be using called normal speed so i'm going to change the default name just double click on it and we'll call it normal speed and i'm going to say that this rat's normal speed is 13. Um, choose any number between 10 and 20 really and then we're going to use another alterable value that will come up later um, and this is for when they can start to sense where you are close to center uh, that'll make sense later on we're not going to use that at the moment but just while we're here we might as well their movement let's change it on the running man from static to bouncing ball uh, their initial direction let's clear this let's just set it that they move left or right and their speed um, that's going to be quite fast let's set it to what the normal speed is for this one 13 moving at start now we've got a number of angles this isn't really that important we can only go down to eight but in our code we will limit them to four um, and we can leave the other randomizer and security you can change those if you want um, but uh, later on we're going to make some rules that override it so so don't worry so let's uh, go to our event editor and add in some rules to change their uh, behavior when they hit a wall so insert a group of events let's call this enemy i'm just going to move the enemy group down lower so i'm going to just drag it down to where it says number six there um, and so that it can fit there if i drag it onto the word new condition it'll it'll make a second copy which is not what we want so just drag it onto the one before last and it'll move it there so a new condition if any of the enemies not just rat one but any of the enemies if they click collide with another with a backdrop so any of the enemy group not just rat one but any of the enemies if they collide with backdrop 
then I want them to do two things. So make sure you're underneath group enemy, right click, movement. First of all, they're gonna bounce. I want them to not travel through the wall, so they're gonna bounce. But then we're gonna change their direction. So we're gonna right click on the same tick there and direction, select direction. And we're just gonna set it to be random choice between up, down, left, right, which end up being zero, eight, 16 and 24. So to any of those directions. Okay, if I run my frame or my application either, you'll see there's the rat moving around. Very good, just randomly though. Let's add in a few more. So go back into the frame editor. Now that's working fine. We'll right click on the rat and choose clone. And we'll do two by two clone. So there's four of them. And we end up with rats one, two, three, and four, all named. And so if we run frame, they're moving about. So let's add in a rule for if they hit into each other. So if we go into our event editor, a new condition, if an enemy collision with another object, another enemy, what we want them to do is right click underneath the enemy group, direction, select a direction. Now we're gonna use a calculation for this. We're going to use whatever the group enemy animation direction is. So the direction that it currently is, we're gonna add 16. Now the reason we add 16 is because there's 32 directions for the type of movement. So between zero and 32, but we, um, we're gonna just halve it. So you could add 16 or take away 16, doesn't matter. It just means they'll reverse when they touch each other. If you run your frame, check that works. And there we go, and they ha they're not going through each other now. Okay, if we close that and save it, we can go on to the next part. Now we're gonna add in some lives. So we're gonna go back into the frame editor and lives exist as an object by default underneath the player one uh, joystick controller, but they're not shown. So we need to insert a new object to show our lives. So down on the list, you can see lives, the hearts and press okay. And we're gonna click, just add them to the bottom corner down here somewhere. We can change the default amount of lives in the application now called Vacman up here, but right at the top and we're going to go to runtime options and at the very bottom it's got initial number of lives three we're going to set that to two when we click back on our frame you can see it's reduced the amount of lives um, we're going to leave these as hearts but once again you could double click and draw whatever you like to represent your players but we'll do that later so now we've got the lives shown let's add in um, some events so a new condition, if the player collision with another object, anything from the group enemies, we're gonna do a few things. So first of all, we're gonna subtract one from the number of lives. So underneath the joystick, not underneath the visual lives, but underneath the joystick here, player one, right click, number of lives, subtract from number of lives, one. Then we're going to um, destroy the player. So right click and destroy the player. And then we need to reset the, the level. So what we'll do is we'll right click under the timer and fire an event after a give, given delay. So we're gonna have an action happen. And we'll say after two seconds or three seconds, and we'll call it reset. Leave the uh, double, inverted commas or speech marks, leave those so it just looks like that. Okay, and then we need to have what actually happens with reset. So click on new condition and the timer on event reset. We'll need to set player one. You need to recreate player one. So underneath create new objects on this, on this row, we're gonna right click create object, player one and we want to select where it starts. So I'm just going to 
put the put the X there. Now, careful if you click there, it will start placing it relative to player one. But we want the actual X and Y coordinates. So um, I make sure it's not got relative to selected. So we create that, and we'll put all the rats back in the cage. So if we right click on the enemies position, select position, and we'll just place them once again, not relative to, but the actual X and Y coordinates and place them back in the cage. Okay, uh, give that a go. So run your frame or your application, go and touch a rat. And then after a few seconds, you restart. It's working fine. Now you'll notice that when you run out of lives, the game carries on going. We're going to sort that out later by adding an end game screen. Save your work. So we're going to go back into our frame editor to add in the little collection um, items. So it's going to be sort of scrunched up pieces of paper in our game. But because I want to use white and the background's white, I'm just going to use this opportunity to change the background color of the frame. So by clicking on frame one and then going to settings, I've got background color here and just click on the white box and I'm going to just change it to a very dark blue. And then I will insert a new object to be our collectible active because we want to be able to destroy it. And I'm just going to pop it down. Now let's give it a name, change the about and call it collectible and change its artwork. So you can do that in whichever way you want. Double click or right click and edit or press enter. I'm going to clear it. Now in Pac-Man, it's quite a small item that you collect. Sort of those little dots or pills or items. I'm not exactly sure what, but anyway, so I'm just going to make a little item. I'm going to use the paint tool again, and I'm going to just fill all the available spaces. So I've added all my collectibles in and I've been careful not to put them in the corners because I've got a special power up that I want to put in the corners. And I've been careful not to put them on the walls because you wouldn't be able to collect them if they were inside the wall. And I've been careful not to put them on top of each other. Now you can't tell if they're on top of each other easily, um, but you would notice with your score. So just try and be as neat as possible when you do it. So we're going to the event editor and add some rules in for those. We're going to click just at the bottom on the number 11 so that when we insert a group of events, it's at the bottom and we'll call it collectibles. And the rule is a new condition, if P1, collision with another object, collectibles, it's white on white. So if you're struggling to see it, there are these options of seeing a list and that might help you be able to see your items there. Um, and yeah, also seeing it in uh, grid mode might be more helpful. Collectible, I'll just zoom in a bit, make it clearer. So if we hit into the collectible, then what we can do is we can add some points. So under player one, we'll right click, score, add to score, and let's give ourselves 10 points. We'll also destroy the collectible as well. So right click under the collectible and destroy. So a rule for completing the level would be a new condition, if collectible, pick or count, have all collectibles been destroyed? So if the last collectible has been destroyed, we're going to add to um, a counter. Now we're going to use a counter which is called a global counter. Now counters get reset when the frame gets reset, but global counters don't get reset. So we're going to click on the application and we click on values and these are global values and we're going to click new and we're going to change global value a by double clicking on it to level and we're going to change it to level starting off on level one when the last one's been destroyed we're going to the global values under special so if you're going to right click here change a global value add to the level let's add one to the level and then we're going to, under the frame, right click, we're going to restart the current frame. And that will mean that the, the level restarts 
but we'll be on level two. And we'll use that number later uh, for some of the rats. So test your application, run your frame or your application either. And if you run your frame and you complete it, it will close. If you run your application and you complete it, it will restart. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with that. We'll just trust that that works. You might notice two issues that the rats are behind the collectibles because we added the collectibles later and also that we can't see our score. So we'll solve the rat issue and then we'll go to the next section to add in our score. All we need to do in the frame editor is if we select collectible on the asset toolbar, it will select all of them at once and we can say arrange order to back. The alternative is we click on the rats individually and arrange order to front. That would also bring them out in front. Okay, let's save our work, file and save. This section is a quite quick section. We're just gonna add in a score object. So in the frame editor, insert new object and it's called score, not high score, but just score. Okay, and we'll drop it down on the right hand side. Let's just move it down here and we'll change its font. So currently it's just default and we can change it to be text and you could choose a font and set everything up there, but we're gonna leave it. I'm just gonna show you what you can do. If you leave it as numbers, numbers leave it as artwork. And if you double click or right click and edit, you get the image editor, you can draw your own or you can import fonts. So if we click on text tool, choose a color we want and click on import font, then it will fill it in for us. And we're gonna use terminal and make it quite big, maybe size 18. I press okay and just pull it down to there. And that's, uh, that's our score. Test it out, run your application and we should get 10 points every bit of litter that we touch. That's working fine. It's a bit too high. So because we've got snap to grid, we could turn that off or we can just use the cursor keys, the arrow keys on the keyboard, press down and it will move it down a couple of pixels at a time. And we can move it across to get it exactly where we want to align it neatly. Save your work. Now we left these corners out because that's where the, um, the power up is in Pac-Man. So let's uh, insert a new active object, which will be our power up. Click to drop it down and let's name it. So in the about properties, let's change it from active to power up and just give it some quick artwork. So let's double click, clear it. And this is gonna be a piece of rubbish with a battery in it. So just do a quick squiggle for the rubbish, fill it in and the battery I'm gonna use the rectangle tool filled in and just draw a quick battery and show that it's charged up. So let's fill it up and then put some black bars to represent the units of power. There we go. Okay. Now let's have one in each corner. Just drag those in. And then we can go to the code. So let's go into the event editor. In the event editor, we're going to add into the collectibles group that we added before. And we're going to start off by saying new condition. If player one collision with another object with the power up, I'm just going to go back to uh, the standard mode, which I'm used to. Okay then we want to add to the score and we want to destroy the power up and but we also want the player to know they're power, powered up so within the p1 object the vac man we're going to change the value properties we're going to click new and we're going to change alt value a to be called power up count we'll leave it at zero okay so now we're going to do the actions for this condition. 
So first of all, we'll add to the score and let's add 20 this time. So right click under the player one joystick, score, add to score, 20. We are then going to underneath P1, the VAC man, we're going to right click and ultra -roll values. We're going to set the ultra -roll value and we're going to set it to, it's going to be in hundredths of seconds. So three and a half seconds, I think is fine but you could set it to longer or shorter if you wish for the power up to last. And we'll also destroy underneath the power up object itself. We'll destroy it. Okay. So now we've got power up. We'll need to start counting down the power up, but we also want to affect the way that the enemies move as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to right click on group enemies and we're going to set their movement we're going to set the speed to being much slower so um maybe 10 so that they uh, they slow down you can alter this later to to a number that fits in that you think so that you can catch up and eat them also what we'll do is we'll change the way that they look so what we'll do is we'll right click here and we'll change their animation change animation frame to number one so the first one is zero and the second one is one so it's something that we didn't do and this often happens so i'll show you a quick way to add things in that you haven't added in an animation or a frame and you need to do it quickly we'll work from the workspace toolbar and we'll just double click on wrap one and we'll get its image editor up all we're going to do is press this plus button to clone the frame Going to click on it and we'll make them light blue like the ghosts in pac-man and press ok we will have to do that four times but it's going to be nice and quick so number two double click plus click to fill and this is when you get used to systems in click team you can do some nice things very quickly if you've forgotten you can just from the event editor add them in so that's all done so they're going to turn blue they're going to go slow and blue. Next, we're going to add a new condition in for counting down for the power up to run out. So new condition, and it's to do with the timer every, and we just change the seconds down to zero. And I'm going to type in number one here because it's quite hard to drag to one. Oh, I managed it. Uh, it's one out of a hundred. So a hundred times a second. Okay. It writes out like that. And what we're going to do under P1 is right click ultra values, subtract from the power up count one and press OK. So every hundredth second is going to be minusing from the power up count. It sets it to 350. So three and a half seconds later, it will have got to zero. So let's do a new condition, a new condition that we've got to zero. But we could go below zero because the ultra -ball values can go to minus numbers. So P1, click on P1, ultra -ball values, compare to one of the ultra -ball values. If the power up count is lower or equal, have it select like that, then zero, that's when we've run out. And so at that point, we can change the way that the, um, the rats behave. So we can right click movement, let's set their speed, and we're going to get their speed from the enemies values speed so underneath the group enemies there we set the speed to the normal speed and if we right click we can also animation change the animation frame back to zero so they go back to their normal color so that visually does it but what we haven't done is we haven't had uh we haven't made it that we can kill them what we've got here is that when we hit a rat we get destroyed so we're going to insert a special condition here so we're going to right click and insert that if player one's ultra values compared to one of the ultra values so they hit into the rat and we've inserted on that line that if their power up count is lower or equal to zero that is when they die but 
new condition if p1 collision with another object enemies and let's do the same thing again but this time we're going to say greater than zero so right click on the words and insert if p1's ultra values compared to the ultra values if its power up count is greater than zero then we can put the rat back in the cage so right click under the enemies position select position and once again put it back in the cage area make sure it's at the actual x and y coordinates and press ok and let's give ourselves some score as well so let's right click underneath the player one joystick score add to score so make sure you add not set the score but add score and let's give ourselves 200 points for doing that okay and we've got 200 points they go back to the center so let's test it out let's run our application let's see if we can get one of these and there they go blue i don't think i'm going to get them in time i'll have to get another one and they've gone back to normal here we go see if i can there we go can eat into them but now they've gone back to normal and it's killed me great file and save as you saw there when you eat them they immediately escape out of their cage so we need to add a door and uh, we need a door that only works certain ways at certain times so let's go into our frame editor and what we're going to do is we're going to just clone not clone we're going to create it's different we're going to create an active object from this backdrop object so click down it's just called active at the moment so let's name it let's go into the about properties and call it door and i'm just going to hold control down so i can drag so we've got a door along here at the moment it'll have no effect so let's uh let's put some events in so in our event editor we're going to make a new group to keep things tidy so click on 19 or click down the bottom and insert a group of events we'll call it cage so let's uh, set up some rules for this so a new condition that if any of the enemies if they are overlapping another object the door of the cage and then we want to insert the power up count now i can right click and i can insert and i can do it all again but a shortcut and a useful one is you can drag other conditions down to create new ones so we want to know is when the group enemies is overlapping the door we could right click and insert this but i'm just going to show you the shortcut and the power up count is less than zero so we're going to pull down and have a look see that's going to over that's going to overwrite it can you see that if i let go now that's just going to copy over it i had a little square showing it's going to be overwritten but if i pull it down to the number 20 can you see the square's got a plus next to it that's going to add it in so let's drop it in so if the group enemies are overlapping and you're not powered up then they can escape the cage we want them to leave the cage so we're going to right click under the enemies and direction direct select direction we want them to move upwards and go past now let's use that copying technique again so we're going to drag this onto the word new condition to overwrite it and then we're going to pick up a power up count is greater than zero we're going to drag this and add it onto this this condition we've just made on line 21 for us and there we go it's a quick way of doing that so you can also do that with ticks you can drag them and edit them so let's do that as well so if it's overlapping the door and you are powered up they need to stay in there so let's pull this down and then right click and edit it and we want them to go downwards so that it's as simple as that to keep them in at the very beginning so that we've got a chance to get around let's give ourselves some power up at the beginning so on p1 on our values let's just give us one second to start the game so 100 and let's run and test the application there. let's run the application you can see they're trapped and they escape but can you see they're blue now this is to do with their animation and something that i 
I didn't realize earlier, and we, this happens, these bugs happen, but I'll show you how to fix it. If you double click on wrap one and go to direction options, you can see that it's playing through the animation at a speed of 50. So it goes from red to blue. And then because that is the last frame, it stays there. If I looped it, it would flash like police sirens and flash away there. But what I want to do is I just want to leave it. So under the, under the direction options, we want the speed to be zero and not looped. And that way it will stay on frame zero, which is one here, unfortunately, um, but we know it's zero and one in the event editor. It will stay on this first frame until we force it to another, and then it will stay on the other frame until we force it back. So let's just double click on these and just, we just have to do it manually, but it's quite quick. So just double click, direction options, zero, enter to just save that quickly. Direction options, zero, enter. So now if we run our application, there they are trapped, they'll escape. There they are going out. And if we click this, there they are blue. And when the time runs out, just as we want, they'll go back to red. Perfect. So let's just trap one in, see if we can get this one in time. And then when the time runs out, they can escape again. Save your work. So it's starting to get there. It's nearly there. It's just the movement. The rats aren't very clever um, and it's just a bit too random. And Pac-Man, you can get unaligned from the grid a little bit. It's helpful that you're a circle because you collide less often, but, but let's sort that out. So under P1, we're gonna add some ultra values in and we're gonna add two in. One called current direction and another one called new direction. And another one called old direction. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of these directions. So just underneath the player, we're going to say, a new condition, we always, under P1, we want the ultra value of current direction to be their current direction. So let's click on P1, animation, current direction. Okay, so a new condition. If ever P1's ultra values, if their current direction is different to their values, P1 values, their old direction, then they've changed direction. So if the current direction of player one is different to the old direction, this will be run. So uh, let's, let's realign the player in the grid. Now, do you remember earlier I said about those 15 pixels in that's going to be important now. So this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to mathematically set the position of the player. And so we're going to right click and position. We're going to set the X coordinate, the left and right. We're going to get whatever their position X coordinate is. And remember the grid is 32 by 32. We're going to divide it by 32 to work out what square they're on. Now I'm going to put this in brackets in parenthesis. So I'm going to put that there. Now that will end up with a decimal point. I don't want it to. So we've got lots of mathematical functions that we can use and we can add in. Um, you can convert numbers and we're going to be using one to round the value. But I know, I know what it is. I'm just going to type it because it's the word round. It's easy enough. So around that number. So if it's less than uh, 0 0.5, it'll become 0. And if it's more, it'll round it up. So let's round it and then if we times by 32 we're going to get the exact square out that uh, that that we're in and we're going to be at the top corner of that square so we need to add that 15 back on to place it in the center of that square okay so 
round open parenthesis x open parenthesis or player one close parenthesis and then forward slash for divide by 32 close parenthesis star for times 32 plus 15. it seems complicated but it really is just saying find out which square it is and then add 15 to that coordinate let's do that again for the y so right click position set y coordinate it's going to be round and then it's going to be the position of p1 but y this time divided by 32 close parenthesis or brackets depending on which side of the ocean you are times by 32 plus 15. and there we go now we haven't actually set what the old direction is so we're going to make something a bit like a sandwich of two always is and what we're going to do is we're going to always update the old direction so we right click here and say alt value set and we'll set the old direction to be whatever the value of p1 the current direction so it updates it and the reason that works is because this code is run in order, sort of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it keeps on running it in order. All of the black uh, text, all the black conditions will run in order. The green ones can be triggered and sort of happen anytime, but the black ones will run in order. And what it'll do is it will check, it will set our direction to whichever way we're facing, compare it to what it was, and then it will update what the old direction is. So if we change direction, this will get triggered. Uh, you just have to believe me if you don't understand it. Right, let's run our application and just check that our turning now should be much better. There we go. You can see I, I kind of hop into the exact right position. There. At this point, I think I'm going to change my acceleration for P1 while I'm here. I'm just going to go into movement and set my acceleration to something ridiculous like 300 so that I immediately move at full speed. And then that way, as soon as I press left and right, yeah, I get maximum speed out. Much nicer. Great. Now we'll make the rats a bit more intelligent. So save your work. So we're going to add in an invisible object to help guide the rats. So go to our frame editor and insert a new active object. Let's pop it outside for the moment so we can see it and let's give it a name. So in the about properties, let's call it guide. And let's also in AZ, we're going to set a value. This is a special value called a flag. So we're going to click new and double click on flag zero, the word, call it valid. Now flags are their check boxes or tick boxes, but they're just on or off. They're used like switches. They can be on or off. We'll leave it off to start off. Um, let's change the size of our object. Now we can do this a few different ways. We can either do it in the size and position and just type in a new width here. We want it to be 36 wide. Uh, but we can also do it if you go into editing here, here with the size tool and make it 36 wide. We want it to be slightly wider than a block and I'll show you why in a moment. So let's clear it and let's fill in a square. Now we don't want to go right to the corners apart from on the right hand side we do. I'm just going to draw an arrow in here just to, oops, just going to draw an arrow in here just to help you understand what's happening because we're going to rotate the object and all we need to do is right click on the zero and choose cre create rotated directions there we go and there they are press ok now this guide is going to go and it's going to mark all the areas which the rats can go towards you and the reason that we've made it slightly longer is that we're going to have rules of if it hits a wall so it needs to touch the wall uh, then it knows the rat can't go that way and what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much fill the screen 
with with these at any point that the rats should change direction. So I've drawn that little circle to sort of reference uh, which way it uh, it which, which where is the center? That's what I mean to say. So it says you know quite a lot of spaces where it can go. So I will just fast forward that for you now. So I've added in uh, to all the spaces that I think the rats should learn about changing direction a guide. I'm also going to click on one of the guides and change something in its display options called the blend coefficient just here in the display options. It's how see-through it is. Now the player won't see this. We want to turn off that it's visible at the start so we'll do that now so that it the player won't see it but just so that we can see what's happening we're going to set the blend coefficient to 200 or maybe maybe not 120 maybe about halfway see-through semi-transparent and then that way we can still get an idea of what's underneath them okay fantastic i think we're now ready to add some code but just because that probably took quite a while let's save our work So let's go through setting the guides to direct you. It's going to be in two parts. First of all, we'll sort out the guides and then we'll sort out the rats. So let's go into the event editor and let's create a new section, a new group. So just clicking on the bottom number, insert group of events. Let's call this guides. So a new condition we're going to always, a special always condition. Underneath the guide, we're going to right click and we're going to start a loop account for each object. Now, account for each object checks each one individually. And we're just going to call this turn and keep the, uh, the speech marks, the double inverted commas, turn. So new condition, and it's for the guides loop. So the guides loop on each object called, let's write it in again, turn. When you're looking through each of them, we want to check they're not actually got a rat on top because we don't start changing the direction of the rat halfway through a turn. So right click and insert. We want to check that that specific guide that it's checking that time, that it's collision overlapping another object, group enemies. And then we're going to right click on is overlapping and choose negate. So it's not overlapping that little x is a not there we want to set it to uh to face us so what we're going to do is we're going to right click under the guide and we're going to say direction look in the direction of let me just slide this along look in the direction direction look in direction of and we want it relative to this time but click on player one and it should should say relative to player one. If you can't see player one, just click on the words relative to, and you can just select it. Okay. So just to show you what's happening there, if we run our application, you'll see that all the arrows are invisible, so we can't see them. So I'm just going to click on guide and make them visible again, and just in the display options. So hopefully we can see them now. And you can see that they're all roughly pointing at me. Now, they're not exactly pointing at me because they've only got four animations, four directions of themselves. This is a little bit complicated. So let me just explain something. When they're looking at me, looking at P1, they could be looking in any of 32 directions. Now, I'll just demonstrate that um, quickly for you. So, so this is just a demonstration of if we had full animations, full 32 animations for their directions, you can see that they're not always pointing directly up, down, left or right. So we need to limit them. So that's just an example there. So we're going to limit them when they look at us and we'll do it mathematically like we did before. We're going to right click and we're going to set their direction, select direction, and we're going to do it with a calculation. Now, this calculation is going to seem quite complex, so I'll go through it bit by bit, and then we'll read it out slowly. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to take whatever direction they're facing, so on guide, animation, current direction, and we're going to divide it by eight. 
because there's 32 directions and we want four different ones. So 32 divided by eight is four. So that's simple enough in terms of we'll put the parentheses or brackets around it and we will round it down or up depending. Then we will times it by eight in the same way we did with the grid for uh, P1 for the back man. And that, then that will limit them. So if we are to run this, there we go. We've got the nice directions facing us. It looks the same as before, but they're just setting, set themselves to one of four directions. Now we're going to right click and edit this set direction and we're going to add in an extra feature. We're going to add in some randomness to it. Now we want to do it, whatever its current direction is before it gets divided. So we're going to have to add a second set or third even set of parentheses of brackets around dir guide. So you've got round open parenthesis open parenthesis dir open parenthesis uh, guide in speech marks or double inverted commas close parenthesis close parenthesis forward slash which is divide eight close parenthesis start eight. If it looks like this, let's get. If it looks like that, great. If it doesn't. Sorry, uh, you've done something wrong. So in between these two close parentheses or close brackets, we're going to add a random range. Now, I won't go into the maths of it, but minus four for the lowest and eight for the highest works, seems to work the best. Uh, minus eight to eight is what I expected would work, but minus four to eight works the best. And you should have valid expression there. So hopefully, I'll just leave this up on screen for a few more seconds. You can get that in. Press OK. If you understood that, well done. You are a genius. So now if I run the frame, you'll see that they'll be flickering about. And uh, whenever an enemy goes on them, they'll stop flickering because it will only run when an enemy's not on top. The final thing to add is that we want to validate that the movement is okay. So what we're going to do is right click here, set off valid. So we're going to assume that the direction they're facing is not valid. We're going to drag down this, uh, on each one of onto the new condition to save us doing it again. And we're going to right click on the words and insert. We're going to check that the guide collision overlapping a backdrop, and then we're going to right click and negate. So there we go. When you're checking them, if it's not over a backdrop, then it is actually valid so that we can right click here and we can flags set on right click on the guides flag ultra value flags set on valid. Brilliant. That was really complicated. We're nearly at the end now. We just need to get the rats to follow the directions, but let's save your work file and save, save your work. Now this bit's the final bit. So stick with it. We're nearly there. So we're going to continue checking the guides. So drag down on each one of to the words, new condition. We're going to right click and we're going to insert and we want to find if any guide is overlapping any enemies so that we can reference that one, but we only want to do it if it's valid. So only if it's uh, got the valid flag on. So right click on is overlapping, insert guide, multiple values flags is on, and it'll only be on if it's not overlapping the backdrop. So if it's a valid route and it's over, it's touching an enemy, then let's find out how close the enemy is to it so we can work out when it turns. We're going to right click under the group enemies and we're going to choose to set the alterable value that we put in before the one called close to center. And we're going to use this to measure the distance from the center of the guide. So we're going to delete the zero, get rid of that and click on group enemies and position distance with a point. Now it needs the X and Y reference of a point. So we're going to use the guides position X coordinate and press tab, or you can 
drag over, but tab just selects it quickly um, over that section between the triangular parenthesis or brackets. And we're going to get the guide position Y coordinate. And it should look like that. That number is going to help us with the next part. So this is going to be a really big condition. It's going to have sort of four or five conditions combined, but uh, we're nearly there. So let's drag in on each one of it's the word new condition. So we want to check each one and we also want to check which one is overlapping the enemies. So drag that one down and add it to the number. So it's got plus. Now we also only want to do it if the if it's close enough. So let's right click on is overlapping and insert and the group enemies and alt for values compare. Let's choose close to center is lower than and we'll give it a buffer of about four pixels. So to make sure because it's looping through this code, we don't want it to miss it. So if it's closer than four pixels and it's overlapping and we want to check about the player to see how the if the player's got the power up. So let's right click and insert. If the player alt for values compare to the power up. Now we want to check that they're they're not powered up. We don't want to chase them if they are powered up. So so let's change the power up to if it's uh, lower or equal to zero. And we only want to do this one time. All these things are true. Uh, each time these things are true and only once because otherwise it's just going to uh, stick us to the corner. So let's right click on power up count and the final condition insert is under special limit conditions only one action when event loops. And it gets quite simple now because all we're going to do underneath the group enemies is we're going to right click position, select position and is relative to the guide that we're looking at. Okay, and we're going to right click, and this is all we've been aiming for select direction one plus one for a calculation. And here we go guide, animation, current direction. Great. Now, if we do this all again, we can get them to run away when you do have power up turned on. So if we click on number 31 and right click and copy, then right click and paste on number 31. We can just right click and edit on power up count and say that if it's greater than zero, if we've got the power up turned on, then we can right click on the tick and edit. Let's go to the bottom, right click and edit set direction to the guide. We can click at the end and plus 16. And then that means like before it reverses it because it's out of 32. Right, well, that's a whole load, but let's test it out. Let's run our application. When they get loose, that one's got stuck going down. So they're all getting stuck going down. There we go. Here they're coming for me now. Great, and they caught me. Perfect. Now click on guide and turn off visible at start under display properties and save your work. Now that the game's made, we can add in some artwork, some sound and some screens. So let's start off with artwork. Here we go back into our frame editor so we can see everything at once. You can work through each individual item and upgrade its graphics. So uh, with the door, I can double click on it and I can import and I can use the assets that I've downloaded from the website. When you do, make sure you're importing as animation for the ones that have animations and setting the hotspot and the action point to the centers and press OK and things will just update. Now the door, because uh, we made it from the wall, the action point was just slightly off, but for everything else, it should just, as you import it, should update. And as long as things are set for center, it will automatically work. And for the rats, when we open those up, make sure 
you've got import as animation and center and there we go and you can just work through and it'll import both frames and it should remember the settings once you've imported one with an animation and number four you can also at this point decide different characteristics for the rats you could set some to be much slower you can change their normal speed so they behave differently and i'll come back to that with the levels with the difficulty in a moment but let's just do for player one let's import these first so there's some stopped animations now player one's slightly different because if we import the stopped animation we need to right click and create rotated directions then with walking do the same so find walking one And with the direction options, we're going to change the animation speed to something much slower, maybe something like 20. Click on loop, click play. Yep, I'm happy with that. And right click and create rotated directions. And with disappearing, again, find disappearing number one and import as animation. And you can see, just, I'll go back to that you can see that it says that there's six frames of animation. Uh, let's set the speed nice and slow for that, maybe eight. Let's try that out. Yep. And right click on the black dot and create rotated directions. So going back to the rats and their movement, if we go to the event editor at the very start of the frame, so if we go to new condition under the enemy and chessboard, start a frame what we can actually do is we can set their normal speed to be a little bit faster so if we right click alt for values set normal speed let's get what it was so alt for values of the group enemies values normal speed but then we can plus from the specials from the global values our level and then we can also add a multiplier so maybe times by three or by two so that each level the speed increases by two or in this case three so there we go and then that adds a layer of difficulty once you've added all the artwork we'll add a start screen in so save your work we'll head into the storyboard editor which is where we started and we'll click on the number two to create a new frame We'll then pull the picture on top of the other picture to switch them around and we'll also name them so let's click here and change frame two to title for the title of the game and frame one we'll call oh can i get it there we go game so let's go into the title frame so i'm just going to click on the gray number one you can also select it and go into the frame editor this way we're going to insert a new object just backdrop this time just a picture okay to drop it down and then let's change it so double click and import and background title you can see that because the transparent color was set to black we've actually lost some of the pixels two ways to solve this we could just in terms of the title go to its properties and change the background color to black and that solves those pixels. Let's uh, put it back to white though. The other thing that we can do is re-import it. So if you double click, import, background title, and just change the transparent color, double click there to something that isn't in there. So a luminous green. And then that way, if you have a watch in this area, because there's no luminous green, it's not gonna go transparent. We can add some text in so we can insert a new object string at the bottom and just say what well, maybe press space to start stretch out and then make the size bigger so click on text options and maybe make it a bright color an orange maybe click on the font and choose something that looks nice 
and then to add in a tiny bit of code. In the event editor, new condition, the keyboard and the mouse pointer in the keyboard, the keyboard, upon pressing a key, let's press spacebar, and then under the chessboard, right click, next frame. You could also uh, later on add some music into here if you want, but that's the title frame. Let's uh, add a game over frame next. Save your work. So let's go into, let's just use this quick bar here and change it to the game events. So we want to, when it's game over, we want to go to the game over screen. So let's add it in under player, new condition, and let's click on the joystick. When lives reach zero, then under the chessboard, let's right click and let's go to the next frame and add that in. So back again in the storyboard, click on number three. We don't need to move it this time, but let's name it. Let's click once here and call it game over. Let's uh, click on the gray number to edit it and insert a new object backdrop okay click to drop it down double click to edit it import game over there we go and we might as well add the score in so i'm going to pull that from the workspace toolbar just down here and then stretch it bigger because the font is blocky i don't mind it staying blocky when it goes big so that's the score and also uh i can drag the string in from the title press space to, and I'll double click on it, restart. There we go. And in the event editor, just new condition, keyboard upon pressing key space bar. This time under the storyboard controls, I want to right click and restart the application. There we go. And got that quickly added in. Uh, now for sounds, save your work. We'll go back into the game. So there's many ways we can do it. We can go in the storyboard and back to it, or we can use this quick switch here. Either way, let's go back into the game frame and let's go into the event editor to add some sounds. Also, you may have spotted that when an enemy um, leaves the play area, let's just make that happen. Just a quick bug fix right at the end. If they head off, let's run frame. They disappear. So off he's gone, off into the ether. That's because, let's pop them back and do those. That's because we haven't said what happens when they leave the frame area. So uh, if, you, uh, if you've missed this bit, let's add it in. New condition, if the enemy position, test position, if they go off the left, the top, the right or the bottom, we want them to wrap around. So right click movement, wrap around play area, just like the P1, the VAC man. Great. So that'll solve that. Uh, let's add some sounds in to, to finish. Now everything should be working okay. At the start of the frame, we'll add some music. We've already got an event here. So start a frame and under sound, we'll right click samples, play and loop sample. Now, even though it's music, we it's a sample because music is a specific type of file, a MIDI file, whereas samples can be MP3s and WAV files uh, and OGG files. So let's browse from a file. So from a file, browse and music and zero. Now, if you use this music that we've used, you will need to credit it. It's by Kevin McLeod. Um, and so let's, we'll do that just before we finish, but it's Kevin McLeod's music. And sound for a collectible. If we collide with a collectible, samples, just play sample, not loop this time. Browse and collect. If we get the power up, samples, play sample. Just make sure you're doing it on the right row. Power up. Now, when we lose the power up, play sample, I've got power down. Now it's going to constantly play that power down sound while my health is, my, while my power up is below zero. Um, 
dare I try it. Let's have a go. Horrible. So let's right click and insert one of those special limit conditions only once when event loops. And then that way, what? <laughs> Much better. And then we have when we get to the rats, when we eat the rats. So when we touch rat and we've got power up samples, play sample, browse from file, the rat court, and then when we get caught, just all the way up here, samples, play sample. When we get hit by an enemy and we've got less than zero or less of our power up, sound and there we go let's just uh, add in that credit for kevin mcloyd added in a string with it so it's just the fact that you have to say that it's neon laser horizon by kevin mcloyd and that it's used under the creative commons attribute there we go we just have to pop that in the game somewhere if you use creative commons music there we go Fantastic. I think we've made a fantastic game. Let's have a play. But to make them behave a little bit better and not get trapped flipping between guides, I found that adding one extra command in here, when the guide is choosing what direction, on uh, when they're not overlapping a, a bad guy, if you right click on is overlapping and insert, and delay it, so add a timer, and every, and I've tra tried 20 hundredths of a second, so five times a second, maybe even just 50 hundredths, half a second. It means that when you run it, the rats stay to the same direction and don't flip between as much. Any problems or questions, let us know. We'll see you next Retro Remake.